Hello, Bob here on February 12th. Uh, I had to pull the slides on uh, my um, pulse generator circuits and diagrams and pictures and schematics. Uh, but I'm going to make a video and this way nobody can argue with it. What I'm showing you here, what you see in front of you now, is how I make the hollow core open wire pulse generator. And this right here is the very first one that I made and you can see that it's just exactly what you see in the diagram. I made them so I could slide them up and down because you have to adjust the gap. It's a it's very narrow gap. What you have here, if you've got open windings, there's a there's five or six no more than seven, and I'm not going to count them at this time. And then you see there's a, an, a, the wire is not right at the edge of the, of the core. It's about an eighth inch, roughly speaking. And then you can tune it in by adjusting the, sliding that up and down. And what you don't want it to do, if you slide it too far, it'll start to arc. And that's what you don't want. You want a, a very, uh, actually it's a buzzing sound you will hear. And this one's wired. You've got input on one side and output. Now the two coils, uh, the output side, this being the input in this case, and this being the output, this goes to the emitter. And uh, it... Uh, You only have one high voltage, and it is uh, activated by induction. Now here's here's basically what you have here: the coil windings, and you can see how I've just wound them around, and down and then down on this. I'm going to show it up different circuits, but this happens to be a typical schematic you on this type of a pulse generator you've got your high voltage you need enough you need an air gap between the dome of the generator or you need an air gap between that and the pulse generator and you have to tune that all these require fine tuning and uh, you can start out with about a quarter inch on that and then you can move it be able to move that to adjust it in to get your best performance out of the thrust emitter. As you can see, it comes through. You have it. It's just an electrical schematic. I'm, you're only using one side. Even though it's a winding, you're only using one lead. The other lead, the other end of the wire just dead ends. As you can see, it goes nowhere. It just stops. And it comes right through to the emitter. And we're going to I'll have another video on, on emitters going to ground. And that is explains the open core bare wire type. This happens to be the first working one that I had. I have sent, made several designs, in which I'm going to show. <clears throat> I'm going to show one. You can see I can make you can make them different sizes. One that <clears throat> believe this is just an. Let me get that out of the way. You've got this is just this is one style emitter, and I made these emitters so I could change emitters on a basic core. They slide right off, and you just they're wired in just with a with some tape on it. But this is this is one coil inside here as. This is one coil, 
and you can see there are no only wire coming out goes right to the emitter there's no connection between that and this is the primary coil I call them primary and secondary <clears throat> though I think they put out the same frequency there's no change in voltage and only and possibly it's only a change in polarity but this goes this comes from the jet the the static generator and it too is just it's just a coil open wire coil that I have set inside and when it's on the when it's on the uh, rotating system to operate it, it looks something like this and you can adjust this gap but I found out it works best just put them as close as possible because you even as close as not zero it's still roughly a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch now, after working with them over over time, I came up with this style, and these I can put inside. The, these are the style that I use when I install a pulse generator inside the emitter, and you can see that this is fixed. It's still an open wire, and put on one core and the only reason I put these if you notice there's I don't know if you can see that but there's these are holes <laughs> and I put plenty enough just to I don't know if I needed them but I, I felt I want to make sure it had air because air or the atmosphere is the propellant and I want to make sure it had a good supply of it and believe it or not that's exactly because there is ions produced between these two coils when it operates. There's no doubt about it. Plus, you still get the high power off of both coils. It goes to the one goes to the emitter and one comes from the power source. And you'll see I worked with variants, but that's basically the old open. I call it open wire air core type emitters and I made a variety of them whoops over the over the years dropping stuff okay now the next the next style I hope you can is the plate capacitor type emitter. Now this type of emitter it's these two plates as you can see in the drawing they're cut into actually a donut. They don't come clear to the center as you can see and you still need a spark gap to run this and it just runs through just like you would hook up a capacitor with dielectric between it and then goes to the emitter to ground as you can see there's one power in that's one plate and this wire here is to the other plate it's about it's fairly big and I I am making I have just I'm trying to get this installed into a thrust unit that I can put on the road rotating system and we'll get into more in other videos on that but this works fine by the way they all these pulse generators I have used it I use this in a stationary setup and I know it works and it works just fine not a problem it's just big and it's and it's heavy because of the extra material needed for dielectrics and stuff and that's that's is how that works and this is just like I said a typical schematic of how it would be set up to a, a thrust emitter or an ion engine all right now on the next one we got this is the by by filer type of coil winding which I use strictly when I place the, the pulse generators ahead of the 
emitter on the rotating system. These are all made to work on all but a couple. I, I have some here. I'll, I'll get it back here. It's not working out. Overreaching myself here and bumping the cameras. Sorry for that. Okay. I'm going to go a little faster here because you can see that this is just two parallel windings with the insulation on the wire and I use two different color wires so I can identify them when I'm done and you just wind them on a hollow paper core and I'm going to I have I have several sizes that I use you can make them any size you want these big ones these larger ones, they're a little, I'm not going into it now, but they're not exactly the same, not only in size, but they, I use them stationary when I'm using, when I'm testing a new uh, setup, especially the ion, uh, the emitters, the thrusters themselves, and I do a bench test, and this is the type of pulse generator that I'll put on that, and then when I'm, this is, and this is how I finish them out before I install them. They can be either, I, I fully encase them. As you can see, there's four leads coming out, which you'll have, and they're identified, the white ones with a green tracer, and then you have the green ones with a white tracer or solid color. Anyways, that'll tell you which ones are which. They're really, this, I usually only wind them, I never go much, I go by footage, not so many, I don't, you can wrap, keep wrapping until you use the footage up right on top. You don't need just the one layer, I'm showing this here for convenience, you can have a couple layers. I go by footage, and what I mean by that, I use, I use them, uh, usually I, I use no less than 7 feet, and I go 14 and I have gone as high as 21. Now, these big ones contain about 21 feet. And that's per wire. So if you're running two, you can see how long that gets. The other thing, they seem all to work in the same pulse frequency. I, I have no real way of telling. But this is generally what it looks like when I'm done with it and ready to install it into a thruster unit and this is what it will look like when you're all done and you've seen the videos on it I don't get all hung up here but here you have it this is this is one unit you can see it's got the it's got the barrel type emitters here and these are and you've got I've got a cone emitter in them. Now these these uh, thrust units these thrust units contain this area houses the pulse generator. Now not all of that is pulse generator. This pulse generator is actually quite short because I'm running a full cone that cone comes clear up into here so the pulse generator is just about in this area here and everything up ahead of this is just my plastic cone with uh, with a fairing and if you notice this especially on that uh, any seams I have there's oh if there's an overlap if it's not smooth it's all going toward the back. All the laps go in the lapped over going toward the back of the machine or toward the emitters. And this unit, there is a video on this very exact unit. A couple of them as a matter of fact. And that gives you an idea how that goes. And uh, then I'm going to make a video more on the other. So We'll get back to you on, on, on the rest of it there. 
And this, oh, by the way, on this type of pulse generator, you, I'm showing, I'm showing here, uh, only for illustration reasons, how many taps you can get to go to emitter. You can actually run three emitters off of the circuit if you want to, depending on what you're doing. All right, that should hopefully that'll help anybody that wants to to put one together as is what I've got. So I'm going to talk to you later. Bye.